Hello and welcome back to another Chemistry Academy video. In this video, we're going to go over the some molar volume related questions. Um, if you're needing some background on molar volume and the theory behind it, if you check out my other video on molar volume, that will give you an intro into the concept of it. So in this one, we're just going to work through some past paper questions as examples. So this one here, which of the following gases has the same volume as 128.2 grams of sulfur dioxide gas? So if it's the same volume, that means it's the same number of moles. Because of the molar gas law, if you have any gas, um, it will occupy the same volume for the same number of moles. Okay, so we want the same number of moles as this 128.2 grams of sulfur dioxide. So if we work out the moles of sulfur dioxide we've got, so its formula is SO2. We'd be using N equals M over GFM since we've been given a mass. So that would be 128.2 divided by the GFM. So one sulfur and two oxygens. So that is 64.1. If we then do that maths, then that gives us two moles. Okay, so now we're looking for the one up here that also matches up. So if we work out the number of moles of each of these, remember hydrogen is H2, helium is just HE, oxygen is O2, and neon is NE. So for hydrogen, that would be 2 over 2, so that's one mole. So that's not going to be the same volume. For helium, that would be 8 over 2, which will be 2, so that looks like it could be our answer. For oxygen, that would be 32 over 32, because 2 times 16 for the mass of oxygen is 32. So again, that's 1 mole. And then neon is would be 80.8 over 20.2, which is 4 moles. So our answer is B, because that's the same one that matches up the number of moles of sulfur dioxide gas we've got. If we go on to the next one, so how many litres of nitrogen dioxide gas could theoretically be obtained in the reaction of one litre of nitrogen monoxide with two litres of, of oxygen sorry, gas? So we've got one litre of this and two litres of this. So anytime you're given quantities of both reactants, you need to do a limiting and excess comparison. So if we take the reactants, nitrogen oxide, monoxide and oxygen, and the mole ratio for them is 2 to 1. So what that means, if we want to react all of our 1 litre of nitrogen monoxide, we need just half the amount of oxygen based on the mole ratio. So that means we need half a litre of oxygen. If it needed in there, we have two litres present, so that's more than we need, which means the oxygen is in excess. So our nitrogen monoxide is the limiting one. So that's the one that's going to dictate how much product we make. So once we've worked out what our limiting reactant is, we're trying to work out how many litres of nitrogen dioxide we can make. So, because the mole ratio between these two, if I write this down here, so now we're using the limiting versus the product, and it's a 2 to 2 ratio, which can be simplified to 1 to 1. So if we have 1 litre of the nitrogen monoxide, we can make 1 litre of the nitrogen dioxide. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so it's as easy as that. This next question, we've got another reaction. So in 20 centimetres cubed of ethane, as I'm going through this, I'm going to write the volumes that we get given above the chemicals. So 20 centimetres cubed of ethane was sparked with 100 centimetres cubed of oxygen. What was the final volume of gases? So... When you get asked about the final volume of gases, that means we need to take into account all the gases that will be there at the end. So the water 
is a liquid, so that's going to be excluded from this calculation because it's not a gas. So to start off with, because we've been given the amounts of both reactants, we need to do a limiting and excess comparison again. So let's put the wee ratio down here. So it's 1 to 3.5. I'll just change it to decimal because um, there's no number in front of here or 3.5 in front of there. So 1 to 3.5. So that means if we want to react all of our 20 centimetres cubed of ethane, we need to have 20 times 3.5 worth of oxygen because of the 1 to 3.5 ratio. So then we would need 70 centimetres cubed of oxygen. But we have 100 centimetres cubed present. So again, our oxygen is in excess. Uh, and this time, because we want the total volume of gases, we need to know how much it's in excess by. So you can just do a quick sum there. We're going to need 70. We have 100, so there's going to be 30 centimetres cubed in excess. Okay, So you need to bear that number in mind at the end. But now we know that this ethene is limiting. That's going to dictate how much product we make. So we can use that to work out how much carbon dioxide we've actually produced. So this time our ratio is 1 to 2, based on the numbers in front. So if we have 20 centimetres cubed of ethane, we could make 40 centimetres cubed of carbon dioxide. So that's how much carbon dioxide we're going to make. All of our ethane is going to have reacted because it was the limiting, so there'll be none of that left. But we do have our 30 centimetres cubed of oxygen there as well. So all together... We add those two, we would have 70 centimetres cubed of gas at the end of the reaction. Okay, so it's very similar to the one before. We work out what's the limiting reactant, use that then to find out how much product you make, but because it wants the total volume of gases, you need to add on anything that's in excess. This last question here didn't ask us to do that. However, we would have had one and a half litres of oxygen in excess. So if it did want the total volume of gas at the end of the reaction, it would be the one litre of the nitrogen dioxide plus the one and a half litres of oxygen that was left. This one here is one that you would typically get in the extended answer section of the exam. So again, as I read through it, I'm just going to write numbers above chemicals. So we've got copper reacting with hot concentrated sulfuric acid to produce sulfur dioxide. Calculate the volume in litres of sulfur dioxide gas. So we want to work out the volume of that. It would be produced when 10 grams of copper reacts with excess concentrated sulfuric acid. So we know which ones are limiting reactant already. We know it's that because it's told us the concentrated sulfuric acids in excess. And then it tells us the molar volume of sulfur dioxide is 24 litres. Cool. So that's going to be our two chemicals that we're using. So I'm just going to rewrite them underneath. Now, because for the copper, we've got... Oh, sorry, I'll put the moral ratio in as well. So the moral ratio is one to one. And because for the copper, we've got masses in grams, we're going to use NMGFM for that one. So I'll list those variables underneath there. And then the sulfur dioxide has got a molar volume and a volume of gas. So we're going to use N v and mv for that one so the n equals m over gfm relationship is in the front of the data booklet the molar volume relationship isn't so you just need to try and remember that one but it's essentially identical to nm gfm but instead of the m you've got a v for volume and instead of gfm you've got mv for molar volume what you just need to remember is that your molar volume is in liters so that means your volume has to be in liters as well so you'll need to convert your volume to litres if you're given it in centimetres cubed. So we're trying to work out that. We know this is 24. Sorry. Uh, writing the units down helps you remember what the units for the volume are. And then we've got 10 grams of copper. And if we look up, it's GFM. GFM of copper is 63.5. 
So as you can see, we can start calculating the moles on this side because we've got enough information. We don't have enough information on this side yet. So N is equal to M over GFM. So in this case, that will be 10 over 63.5. So if we put that into our calculator, 10 divided by 63.5, that's 0. Point, we'll just round it to 0. 0.16. 0.157. I'll just put 0 0.157 actually. Okay, so that's 0 0.157. Then using the one to one mole ratio, that means this would be 0 0.157. And then the volume, this is uh, if you want the molar volume triangle to remember, uh, this is what it is. Again, very similar to NMGFM1. So V it's on the top is equal to n times mv so v equals n times mv so that'd be 0 0.157 times 24 which is 3.768 liters and again because the molar volume is liters per mole then the final volume ends up in liters as well then this one here, it's slightly different because it's got enthalpy involved, but it still involves the molar volume relationship. So I thought this would be a good example to finish off on. So reading through the question, calculate the volume of oxygen. So that's oxygen there, required to provide 418 kilojoules of energy. That's the energy there. And then it says take the molar volume of oxygen to be 24 liters so I'll put that there okay so that's the sort of two things we're using so we know at the moment that six moles of oxygen gives us this much energy so we need to work out how many moles we need for just this much energy so we're kind of setting up a numerical relationship here so six moles O2 gives 2807 kilojoules and then we want to work out how much we would need for a bit more of a gap here 418 kilojoules so we're going to work back this way scale to one kilojoule first so that would be six over 2807 and then multiply up to the 418 so six over 2807 times 418 so we work out what that is six divided by 2807 times 418 so that means we need 0 0.893 moles of O2 to get that much energy okay so now we can we've got a number of moles we can then use the molar volume relationship to work out what that would be and then a volume because that's what we're trying to work out remember we're trying to work out the volume of, ox of oxygen so V is equal to N times MV, which would be 0 0.893 times by 24. My brain going too fast for my hands. So then if we put that into the calculator, we get 21.432 litres. Um, and you can round to as many decimal places as you like. It doesn't matter as long as your round is correct. So you could round to 21, you could round to 21.4, you could round to 21.43. Um, as long as your rounding is correct, it really doesn't matter. So hopefully that variety of examples covers pretty much all the types of questions you would get on molar volume within the SQA higher chemistry paper. Um, but definitely give some more a go and put these learnings into practice. If you found this helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe.